Hello and welcome to Rage Creep. My name is Jay and today I want to talk about Hero Forge 2, an upcoming Kickstarter that is promising full colour custom miniatures. So these are going to be 3D printed miniatures that have full colour. And the reason I think this is possibly important, yes, the initial price point is likely to be very high per miniature, but I do think that we are on the verge of 3D printing really changing up and mixing up wargaming. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. I'll also talk about briefly why I sold my FDM printer and why I might buy a resin printer like everybody else seems to be doing. But um, that's just that's just one of the things we're going to talk about. So um, as I shake the desk, let's have a look at something. I just want to say that I made a video about three months ago, which where I said, does 3D printing like kill wargaming as we know it? And I still think that might be the case. I think companies like Games Workshop, etc. are really going to have to react to this kind of stuff. Now, I realise my face is in the way here, but uh, this is just a 3D render. So Hero Forge, for those of you who don't know, they do. They have a website. You can go on and you customise your hero, which typically is used for D&D &D kind of games at the moment. And the printing, they'll 3D print it. You can customise the pose, what they're wearing, etc. their face. And they'll print it for you or you can buy the STL file and print it yourself. And I think the cost range is maybe something like $30 to $100. I don't know. I was very briefly just watching Black Magic Crass on uh, his version. But they are, there's a coming soon Kickstarter with the tagline full colour custom miniatures. Um, which sounds incredible really, doesn't it? So we have, I think, maybe this render here where you can see... Uh, this is obviously a 3D render rather than the printed version of it, but we'll get onto that in a moment. And you can pick your colours for everything you want, and they're going to print it like that. Now, uh, that sounds incredible, doesn't it? I think painting is one of the things that puts a lot of people off wargaming. They just don't want to get into it. I don't particularly like painting, I just do it because I want to get to the game, uh, whereas this will potentially take that away. Now, I know you hobbyists out there will still want to do your own painting and stuff like that. Um, I'm not suggesting that, that that idea and that concept, that opportunity goes away, but this sounds crazily like exciting to me. So you can you can see it's the same same kind of concept of the Hero Forge as it already exists. And now they have colours. Interesting. But the key question to that that is one, how much does it cost? Two, um, how good is the quality? So 3D printing with colour as a whole been around for a little while, I think. Um, I was watching, um, uh, who was I watching? Beast of War, and they were talking about how on there's like a sandstone technique where you add pigments to the layer. So we don't really know how that's going to work. I'm not really that into 3D printing. I know the basics about resin pre uh, printers and FDM, that kind of stuff, but we're not 100% sure how they're going to do this. But we do have some leaked versions of this um, actually in the flesh, if you will. So um, this is one image that has is uh, going around on the internet right now. And when I saw this, I was initially like, ah, it's not amazing, but it could still be fantastic, right? Um, because, you know, people don't want to print their miniatures. And uh, there's a couple of things on this image. I don't know if you can tell on, on the screen or if it's just my like um, screen that's showing me, but it looks quite shiny. There's definitely quite a lot of light bouncing off it. The quality of the colours perhaps doesn't look like amazing, but... You can tell the colour is essentially all in the correct places, right? Um, the detail perhaps looks a little soft, yeah, but you've got to consider that this is concept pre-Kickstarter, right? Obviously, they're going to kickstart it probably for the machines. However, when I was thinking about these, I was like, really? When I paint, that's about as good as I get. <laughs> like, that's probably better than what I can do. Um, the only thing I would do to that is give it either an Agrax Shade wash on certain areas or a known oil wash, it looks like you literally might get it like that, be able to give these a wash and have something that is very, very, very playable and customised to taste. Now, um, so that looks that looks fine, doesn't it? And then there was this image which apparently leaked from the CEO's desk or on Facebook. He's like uh, done, he just posted this picture. And uh, again, like here, I think this looks... To me, it looks much better than that image there. Obviously, we are a little bit further away. Um, I think the pose might be ever so slightly different. Maybe it's just the angle at which he's looking at. But yeah, all in all, that there, from, I mean, this is just a little bit further out as well. On the tabletop, I think that's going to look completely fine. 
Like I'd be I, that is completely completely fine. Uh, I think it looks pretty nice. So I mean, that's what the it's a Kickstarter. Obviously that'll go live. I don't think I'll talk about it when the Kickstarter goes live unless there's something to talk about. Um, that they you know they something different than what we're expecting. We don't know how they're going to get this quality. We don't know how they're doing that at the moment. There's different techniques available right now, but really bringing colored printing to the masses. Uh, is an exceptional opportunity for people. Now, the problem with this is at the moment, it's Hero Forge. They're going to be doing it per miniature, and every miniature costs, even if it's $80 or $50 or what have you, obviously you're not going to print an army like that. That would be ridiculous. But as time goes on, things inevitably decrease in cost. So eventually, Yes, we have resin 3D printers at home now, which can give you a nice looking miniature, but obviously it's not printed. And those printers, they're like $200, £200. That's an exceptional um, quality per cost, really. If I were, I'm, I'm going a little bit off tangent here, but let's think about Games Workshop right now. Like a full army of Games Workshop products, probably like 300 400 quid. If people wanted to be unscrupulous, and I'm not suggesting anybody does this, but... If perhaps you, there was a game that had um, a neutral company involved or just a neutral setting and it was quite popular and you could just print off the miniatures, you could print off the same number of miniatures on a resin printer for essentially the same kind of cost. So you'd have your printer cost $200, then you'd have the time and then you'd have the actual resin. But then you'd have your one army and yet you'd then be able to print another army because you'd, all you would need would be the resin and the time. So the cost to quality ratio is it, it's almost there. Obviously, a, a Games Workshop model right now is substantially better than a resin printer, but a resin printer um, with a, a decent quality file, it looks pretty It looks pretty damn good. And you don't have to clean mold lines, you just have to clean like the support lines. So we're at the point now, I think, where thing, something's going to change. And I don't know that, that the coloured printing here from Hero Forge 2 is going to be the uh, the instigator because... The cost is going to be too high, but we can look to the future and say, look, if if you can have a printer at home that somehow does reasonably coloured miniatures like we've just seen, and that printer costs £300, we are in the realms of like, not mass consumption, but people in this hobby will be looking at that thinking, oh, it's maybe something that was worth me getting involved in, um, or it might even bring in new people to the hobby. And I think companies like Games Workshop really are going to have to take a look at themselves and say, how do we respond? Obviously, you go to tournaments right now, you like FFG tournaments, Games Workshop tournaments. There's generally rules that say you have to have X percentage of our products. Now, if, that becomes dis if it becomes hard to distinguish between what is your product and what isn't because some unscrupulous individuals make almost exact looking copies, the whole world starts the whole world. <laughs> It's <laughs> very dramatic. The whole uh, concept of that starts disintegrating somewhere. I'm not sure what the solution is. Obviously, at the moment, having just your tournaments requiring your product seems fine. But for people like Games Workshop, who don't run that many official tournaments, um, the organised plays perhaps are lacking behind. I feel like they really need to kick that up to force people to actually play with their miniatures. If Fred and Steve down the road just going to play themselves every like couple of weeks. One of them's got a 3D printer, could just bash it all out. They've got the same quality each kind of models, not the same quality, but near enough. They have fun painting them, they have fun playing. Games Workshop might be getting less and less of that of that slice of that pie. Um, so I, I just, I don't know where the solution is. A bit of me thinks that inevitably that we're going to have to see 3D printable files be released. And so companies like Games Workshop are going to have to do that. I think like FFG, where they have cards and stats on cards and stuff like that, and you're meant to have that official component. In a, in one sense, they're safe because it's it's you need that stuff if you're going to go to a tournament. But for sure, uh, Games Workshop is. I think we're going to get something where they're going to have to sell 3D printable files. I just can't imagine it being anything other than that. Um, but then if you do that, what's to stop somebody illegally downloading them and illegally printing them and all that kind of stuff? So we're going to be going over a lot of minefields and I'm not really sure where we're going. It's not an obvious case where like when Napster came out, 
well, it was like, well, if you make stuff easily available to download, like Spotify, then Napster will die off. At the moment, we're still in the, it's like we're pre-Napster phase, <laughs> um, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. Um, it's very interesting. I have sold my FDM printer, partly because we're having a baby and I need the space, but partly because I bought it for terrain. And for terrain, it took like, you had a big machine and it took like 15 hours to get a building, which is fine, but I really want to be there watching it, making sure nothing breaks. And um, so that meant I could only really print at the weekends. And then if I was printing in here, trying to make a video, you'd hear it. So um, I've ditched the concept of the FDM printer, but I am intrigued in a resin printer. Yes, Black Magic Craft has got one, um, Luke KPS has got one. I was just sort of like tempted to pick one up just personally and now seeing them it's even more tempting. I don't actually have really a use for them at the moment but apart from maybe greebles for like buildings and stuff like that but um, resin printers they're very it's all for some people like myself like 200 quid is I, I don't want to say I could like impulse buy it but I could save up for a little bit and get one reasonably easily so the temptation is very strong and uh just seeing the concept of maybe eventually we'll get colour 3D printers perhaps in the next five years. It's very exciting, but also very interesting for Wargaming. So let me know where you think Wargaming is going to head when we have coloured miniatures. Now I'm presuming the quality of these coloured miniatures are going to be better than say like hero clicks, but you know, it's and it's only inevitably going to get better and better. But where do you think we're heading? Like, let's say a lot of people have good 3D coloured printers what do you think companies like Games Workshop, FFG and that kind of stuff do? I'm very intrigued. I don't know the answer to that, so I'd be very intrigued what your thoughts are. Bit of a rambly video. Um, we'll see if the Kickstarter is, uh, has any information, but coloured 3D printing is exciting, for sure. And a bit nerve-wracking, in a sense, because it's the unknown. But we'll see what happens. Have a beautiful day. Goodbye.